Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So as you can tell by the title, we are going to be upgrading my file server today. So if we look at the, and my keyboard and mouse aren't working here, hold on, there we go. If we look at the thing here, as I try to remember which keyboard shortcuts zoom in on the screen, you can see here we have the four three volumes. I don't know why I said four, but we have the three volumes on my Mac Pro server. The backup drive, which obviously is the backup drive, the boot drive, which is obviously the boot drive, and then master pool, which is where all the file storage and everything takes place. And the backup drive backs up the master pool. So you can see I have 1.69 terabytes available, so I'm over halfway filled up on that drive. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and open master pool here, and we're going to take a look at the kind of file system I have, the arrangements of files, I guess. So applications, library, yeah, applications and library are kind of things that OS X server puts in there, so you can see netboot and everything, and then if we go up here, applications doesn't have anything in it. So storage pool, and there's two things that happen with master pool. It is a drive that has two folders that are shared in it, and if we get info on storage pool, we can see that this folder takes up 604.01 gigabytes. And that's where my YouTube stuff goes, my documents, and you can actually see all of that right there. And then my archive, get info, has 1.73 terabytes on it. So the archive is going on a different server, which means I will have 600 some gigs taken up on the 4,000 gigs that the server provides. So is this upgrade necessary? Not at all. Did I realize that it was unnecessary before I bought the drives? Uh, no. I kind of thought I had more data than I did, and yeah. So before I show you the upgrades I'm going to be putting in the server, I am going to go ahead and actually, there is one I should show because I'm going to be using it in the next clip. And I've alluded to ownership of this device many times before, but I've never made a dedicated video about it. This is my Seagate 8 terabyte Iron Wolf NAS drive. So my original server plan was to have this drive, my other 4 terabyte drive that's in the server currently, and four one terabyte drives in, well, a server configuration, and the four terabytes and four one terabytes would back up to that drive. And what ended up happening was I used the four one terabyte drives, and then I backed those up to the four terabytes, so that drive got left out. And I'm gonna get hate for this in the comments, I know, but yes, that drive just kind of sat there wasting away for really almost a year now. I think it was in March or February of 2017 that I got that, and it's January 10th now. You can see that just barely in the corner there. So anyway, uh, before I continue showing the rest of the upgrades, what I'm going to do is take the master pool drive and clone its contents onto the 8 terabyte. So here you can see the inside of the Mac Pro server. I have the four 1 terabyte drives in the drive bays. And then I have the 4 terabyte up there in a kind of bracket thing, along with the boot drive kind of just hanging there. So something that's nice about this upgrade is I will go from having 6 drives in the system to 4 drives, which means I'll be able to have all of them in the actual drive bays instead of like ghetto mounted like that. So the thing I have to do here, which is quite fun, is remove this and... I have to pull out the boot drive and replace it with the 8 terabyte. So if I grab my screwdriver, you can kind of sort of see me undoing these two screws. And I did get another one of those Fenlink drive adapters, but in retrospect, I have a 2.5 to 3.5 inch drive adapter in here, and I kind of thought I just had the drives hanging but I guess I did put one of these enclosures in here, so that's fun. So I'll go ahead and pull that out, and then just let that sit. So then the 8 terabyte drive, I will rotate the enclosure here. 
And actually, I'll put it on its face like that. So I'm going to put one screw in each side. I think the term is kitty corner, so it's like front left, back right, you know? So if I line up the hole right there and kind of thread the screw in a little bit, of course my screwdriver is magnetic, so it pulls a screw out, so that's counterintuitive. Though I shouldn't complain because the amount of times magnetic screwdrivers have saved me is quite surprising. Especially when working on G5 PCI covers because they fall behind the rear cooling fan and then go into the power supply area. So, anyway, ranting about that aside, I will go ahead and pop this in. And the 8 terabyte is kind of, you know, rattly. So, whatever. Actually, I'm going to put some toilet paper, because I have a roll of that right next to me. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there just for uh, cushioning and insulation purposes. I'm kind of OCD about drives being close together in the... PCBs shorting out. This is kind of ghetto. Actually, it's really ghetto, especially for, you know, this thing that I'm holding is 12 terabytes. So, there we go. So if I kind of just wiggle that in there, we can see that's installed, and now I'm going to take the drive here out of its enclosure. So this drive, actually no, the enclosure here has tape on it just to once again insulate the PCB from shorting out on the aluminum. So I'm going to put a SATA to USB 3 cable on here and kind of just have it hanging out the back of the Mac Pro. And actually, I suppose, I could put the drive right in here, and at least it will be kind of a bit safer in one way or another. And I'll just run the cable out the back. Of course, the video card is a GT120, I believe. So yeah, this is good enough. It's not blocking the video card fan. Video card isn't even plugged into anything. So the Mac Pro is on KVM input 3, so if I go ahead and hit that, it should work when I turn it on. Sometimes no screen display signal comes up, but hopefully it does this time. So you can see we now have a external boot volume there, along with master pool backup drive, which it's not really too happy about the backup drive, it would seem, because that used to have the time machine thing. And then Iron Wolf Archive, of course, is the 8TB Iron Wolf. Anyway, I'm going to probably be paying for this eventually, but it's just kind of a lot right now. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going to call this Big Drive and select a source, Master Pool, and then if we go to Iron Wolf Archive, I'm going to add a folder called Pool Dump. So, Master Pool goes to Choose Folder, Iron Wolf, Pool Dump, okay. So now, of course, what's going to happen is I'm going to be cloning 2.31 terabytes over to the Iron Wolf drive, and that will provide a backup so I can pull out the RAID 0 array and the current backup drive, which popped up right there as a backup drive now. And then I can play around with the server, then clone the pool dump folder back to the new storage pool that's going to have the 8 terabyte RAID 0 array. So yeah, let's go ahead and clone that. And while the clone runs in the background, I'll put my keyboard and my mouse off to the side and show the rest of the upgrades. So I bought another Fenlink drive adapter, so it's the 2.5 to 3.5 inch drive adapter. I put one of these in the Mac Pro workstation for the Windows drive, and I have had no problems with it whatsoever. And it's cheaper than the OWC one, so... I bought another one. And of course it's a relatively minimalistic kit. 
just comes with the screws for the drive and the enclosure so you can screw it into the whatever of course we're not going to be using those because the mac pro has a thing a drive sled and yeah so there is that and then the other thing is the new four terabyte hard drive which has been sitting on a shelf for about a week because i got it and then my back started acting up and i couldn't really walk or get out of bed long story short it's finally going to get used now so if we pull it out of its box which is a nice sized box i could definitely use that for something and then we remove these there is some anti-static material you can see we have a brand new four terabyte Western Digital Drive. So, like I said, and like you all know, I have one of these in the Mac Pro already, and that will go from being the backup drive to being a RAID 0 drive with this one. So I'll have eight terabytes of storage. And then the Iron Wolf drive will be the backup drive. I guess now it is time to remove the SSD from this MacBook Pro. So, if I go ahead and pop the drive in there, and then remove the screws. So, I will be using the fine thread screws for this, of course. So, yeah, I guess now we just wait for the server to finish cloning the drive, and then we start installing this. So, it is indeed the next day, and the clone finished with no problems. Didn't even say that there were files that couldn't be cloned or anything. It just cloned the volume straight into that folder. No problem, no questions asked. So I'm gonna throw the side panel on my bed and we're gonna start taking this apart. I actually thought this was pretty funny. Yesterday, when I was about to go to bed, sorry for my head cutting across the shot, I was about to go to bed and I looked at the Mac Pro and I was like, where's the drive that it's booting off of? And I forgot that I put it in the side there. With that, taken care of. I mean, the only thing we have to do is remove the drive, so I guess we'll go ahead and pull these out. So, three of these are one terabyte Seagate drives, and then one is a one terabyte WD Black, if I remember correctly. So I'll go ahead and pan the camera down here. So of course that would be all of the hard drives removed from the system. So once again, and sorry for me cutting across the shot again, I have the 120 gig SSD, is that in the frame? Yes that is. And then the old 4 terabyte, the new 4 terabyte, and the 8 terabyte. So yeah, that's a lot of storage. 16 point one, two terabytes, I believe, is what that adds up to. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So now I'm just gonna install them on the different trays. I can't mount this in the Mac Pro, can I? See the problem there? That's not good. I guess I'll just put it in that thing again, and then that thing won't go in the archive server. So here is the 8 terabyte drive installed in the enclosure, and I don't know where my foam tape went, but once I find that, I'll pull this apart and I'll just tape this adapter thing in. And I'm actually going to plug this into the bottom connector because I don't want the top connector to like short on the back of the drive, which it really shouldn't. But, you know, better safe than sorry. So that, I guess, will just fit in there. That should be fine. The only reason I want to tape it in is because it kind of resonates. And it did that with the other drives installed. It would resonate in there and it would get really annoying. So, yeah. I guess that takes care of putting the upgrades in. So, with that said, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.